Hello guys! Today we are going to be continuous teaching and I will make this video one total video for Flamingo and um, so I decided this uh, time to make uh, uh, locally videos because internet connection is uh, often like interrupting us and uh, so I decided to make uh, to go back to my previous process and to make uh, um, videos uh, locally so um, and uh, this is actually good because we are going to have a better quality videos this way and I will be able to cu uh, cut off all the like uh, all the parts we don't need, so uh, those videos should be more interesting and interacting. So I'm going to be using those four colors for Flamingo. And I'm going to start from the lightest one. Uh, you already have a color map. map and... Uh, so use it for to guide yourself where uh, each color should be used and so let's start uh, for comfortability i will mark um, the areas i will be stitching for for this color so i'm not going to be looking to the color map all the time and so um, this is going to be the lightest color and it's going to be here, here, so I'm going to mark the areas for myself to know where it's going to be. And it also here and here and here. So now I'm just going to be concentrated on stitching and I will uh, fix my hoops, uh, my hoop in the hoop stand and proceed with stitching. One moment. Okay, so I'm going to be using this color and I will just show you how I will feel um, this area. I'm gonna use two strands of floss but I took only one strand and I put it together so I will have a loop like this. And I will start from the loop. Let's teach. Let's teach this one. So I'm going to be using I want it to be look like like look like uh, feathers, like a real feathers. So I'm gonna use this stitch for every 
please. I actually forgot how this uh, stitch is called, so I will double check and let you know. So according to the to this uh, book, that stitch that I use it for, sorry, I use it for those sections. It's uh, it's fishbone stitch, so it's not complicated. It's similar to satin stitch, but. Uh, the texture is, it looks naturally and I like how, how it looks. You probably use it this kind of stitch for stitching leaves and stuff like that. And it's like a, a turning, turning a little bit to the left, so I'm trying to keep it naturally and uh, changing my direction a little bit. And I'm going to be switch to switch to another one. So basically this is how it's gonna look like and I will also do the same thing for all the rest scissors uh, using this color and I will be back to you uh, once I will finish filling all the scissors okay Okay, so I'm done with those two colors and I'm gonna switch to this color and I will make outlining for each section which I already stitched and I also fill those three sections with this color. For outlining, I'm gonna use a uh, stem stitch and only one strand of floss. So here is an example of what I'm gonna do right now. Let's do it here. So this is slightly darker color than I stitched. It. It's darker than uh, this light one and it's darker than this second color. For outlining you can use um, back stitch, split stitch or even stamp stitch if you want. You can try all of them and uh, see which is working best for you. But I see that I like stamp stitch uh, because it creates um, a solid line which I need. Thank you. 
this is how it's gonna look like. With outlining, uh, you can uh, add more contrast between those two colors and but you can leave it as it is without outline if you like uh, how it looks like it's uh, totally up to you i guess so i'm trying to go Right, exactly between those two colors and not split any stitch with uh, lighter pink. And here is how looks stem stitch, so it's, it can be also op an option, it looks great. I think it even looks better than split stitch. So I'm going to continue with stem stitch and I will be back in, in a second. <laughs> for you it's a second, for me it's a few hours. <laughs> So here is on the half of my way to finish outlining for this section and uh, yeah I'm still I'm using combination of uh, stamp stitch and split stitch and I use it uh, where I feel comfortable and I, I see that um, Yes, it's gonna. It became look better when it's it has um, this tiny outlining because um, I can recognize each section and uh, it gives yeah a lot of contrast. So I think it was it worth it. <laughs> And this stitch where I fill um, those sections, it also calls um, a fish. It, 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 it can be used by uh, fish bone stitch and it, it also calls um, in some resources, uh, they say that it's a uh, leaf stitch. So... Um, you can choose the way wherever is comfortable for you actually so this is a fishbone stitch or leaf stitch it's up to you you can try both and see if uh, which one is is best for you And I'm continuing with outlining and I will be back when I will finish. Okay, so I finished with outlining. As you can see, all the parts are outlined. And uh, now I'm switching to... I also added a little bit of uh, darker pink here because I feel that uh, it's going to be better with this. And now I'm switching to the darkest pink, is this one. And I'm gonna fill this area with long and so short stitching. This is going to be uh, this and this. I decided to use two strands of floss to make it a little bit faster. But you can use one strand of floss if you feel that it's going to be better to, to make all the details.
the direction of my stitches are going to be accordingly to my um, illustration but I'm gonna be moving from the tail uh, to the to this place and the, here I'm going to be switching to another color and yeah, I'm going to be switching to this direction and then I'm going to be do stitching in this direction and this. So I'm going from the tail to the nose. <laughs> Let's say this way. This is just a simple setting stitch for the small places. I just need to fill those gaps here. And uh, then I will Take just one strand and do outlining for these uh, places with lighter pink. So there will be um, more contrast and there are going to be some borders. Okay, now I'm moving here and I'm following my direction. The direction, direction is going to be changed depending on the body shape. Okay, now when I'm done with this part, I'm switching to this color, it's about to end, so this is this. And I'm going to fill uh, this area. And I'm gonna try to blend uh, those colors but note that I'm do not doing uh, those exact zigzags they those zigzags they just show you that uh, you need to uh, extend your color and mix mix them
so I'm just I can go farther farther than I marked uh, where the color should be ended so um, then when I will be stitching a, using another color here I will be overlap my stitches um, and mix with this medium color And after this, I will use this color uh, for this area and I'm gonna make a transition to the medium pink to the lighter pink. And then I'm gonna use medium pink again here and I'm gonna fill all the neck of this flamingo. And as you can see on my color map, there is the same color here uh, for the legs and um, a little bit of dark pink here and here and I'm gonna make outlining uh, with dark pink as well so I'm gonna do this. You can use um, stamp stitch and move down. Sorry, uh, <laughs> I just realized that you don't see uh, what I was drawing here. So I was drawing uh, market um, the places where uh, the darker pink is going to be used, and it's also going to be used for outlining. Uh, so. I'm going to use the same middle pink for the legs and darker pink like this one for this part. And then I'm going to outline it all. So I'm going to fill it using stamp stitch because it's easy and it's going to be faster. And it gives me a similar result as I could do it with long and short stitching.
So I continue stitching this pattern and I stitched the legs already and I wanted to show you how they look with and without outlining. If you will like to go with outlining, so I would recommend you to do outlining first and then fill the area inside the legs. Because when I did um, the background first and then outline it um, on the right and on the left, the left became become wider. So, um, so if you don't want to get this wider effect, just uh, make outlining first and then fill the inside. And this um, version is without outlining and I see that it looks pretty fine and it even looks better without outlining for the legs. So um, you can see and decide which way you will go. I will probably remove those outlining from the left uh, left leg. So I like how the gradient looks like uh, from the medium pink and darker pink. So I will leave it as without outlining. I like it most. And now I'm gonna continue stitching uh, with for this part. Uh, this part is going to be stitched using this color. So I continue stitching using a long and short stitch. I do random stitches first. And then I'm gonna fill the areas between them. If it's going to be easier for you, so uh, you can mark the stitches directions this way. And the uh, direction of the stitches is going to be, it's not going to be straight, it's going to be curved like this. Uh, and And you can mark it with your pen. Uh, you can use my stitches direction guide to find out which direction you should go. And then you can continue stitching and try to follow this direction. Slightly change your stitches direction with each uh, row that you do. So it's not going to be like uh, cross stitches. I'm using two strands just to make my stitching faster, but you can use one strand of floss if you want to make the gradient and uh, the direction of your stitches to go a little bit uh, smoother then it will be with two stitches so 
if you have a lot of time because it's time consuming so uh, just better use one strand in instead of two strands If you are not sure where your stitch should go, where to put your needle, so you can now uh, first uh, lay down your floss and find the best uh, direction and then put your needle like this. So this way should be it should be helpful. Okay, so I will continue stitching for this area, this one I'm gonna stitch and I will be back to you when I will finish this area and we'll be switching to another color. Okay, now when I'm done with this area, as you can see I, I I go a little bit farther than uh, the line was drawn because I will need to expand this light color to this side and then I will be, when I will switch to another color, I will be expanding this color to this side. So this is the area of mm, mixing those two colors. And I'm switched to another color right now it's going to be this one it's about the end so <laughs> this is how it looks like in my work so um and i'm going to be uh using this color to fill the whole neck of the flamingo I will be moving from here to here and I'm going to be following the stitches direction like this so it's going to be to look natural and the shape is curved so uh, better don't use long stitches, just uh, use uh, those short stitches as I do, it's a half of inch and not more, so you will be able to, to stitch uh, in the shape of, of this uh, curved neck. Okay, so here I am trying to uh, to make my stitches flow to the shape of the flamingo neck and I wanted to give you one more tip for how to make this flow much better. Uh, when you see that the shape of the shape is more curved than if 
you can see if on this side when it's more curved so you need to make shorter shorter stitches to to keep uh, this shape like this so try to make short stitches in those areas instead of longer one if uh, the shape is not is is covered not so much you can uh, use uh, longer stitches so that's why I use it shorter stitches here and I can use longer stitches on this side. As you can see, I did only short stitches for this area, which is the most the most curved. And where where the curves are tied, so just shorten your stitches to get around them the the better and I would recommend you to not panic and uh, turn them too soon because it's gonna make only like uh, cross stitches turn each row slightly So, when you will practice stitching such curves, you will feel comfortable next time. So, um, if you are not sure that you will be, so that you will make it uh, perfect from the first time, you can uh, draw some shapes and on another piece of uh, clothes. Or fabric and you can just practice and try this technique also there is one tip for you do not uh, put uh, do not keep your uh, stitches too tight because there is a risk to have a little bit of uh, <laughs> thing like that that I already have so uh, try to keep all the time your fabric drum tight and uh, don't don't tight your stitches to avoid this problem You can also outline your edges first, like this, using stamp stitch before filling the main area. And only then you, you can uh, feel the area inside. It can also help you to to keep the right stitches direction on when you are filling the area. Sorry. 
Eltern. Okay, I already did stitching for the neck and head and I switched it to another color. This is the lightest pink. This one. And then I will finish with the black color. I skipped the area with the eye, so I will stitch it later and I will make some stitches on top of the, of the rest if I need. And also I switched to one strand I switch it to the one strand here uh, and uh, continue the stitching to the up because you can see now what's the difference um, this is it gives me more smooth result and it looks much much better than uh, using two strands but two strands also um, can look great so you can choose depending on your on your stitching speed and uh, it's totally up to you And now I'm gonna switch to the most interesting part. It's eyes and and mouth. And this is going to be the finishing of flamingo. I'm gonna outline the area for this last part using split stitch. And then I'm gonna fill the entire area using long and short stitching. The best thing about stitching using black floss is that it's not actually clearly visible where your stitches goes, so you can do it with a teeny little mistakes. Um, And because it's black floss and 
so those mistakes are not going to be visible too much as it uh, could be using any other thread color. And now I'm jumping to the eye and I do really really teeny and short stitches trying to make the shape of eye as natural as possible. If you need to make a few more stitches to make the shape of eye look like a real one. And in the center I will make a teeny French knot with unwrapping one more one time. And that's it. Flamingo is ready. Thank you so much for watching. I hope your flamingo will look fabulous. Please share with me your stitching results and progress shots on Instagram. You can tag me and use my hashtag. So I will see it and probably repost it on my feed and stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.